Gallery loves a jewelry junkie. Bead Gallery is located at 100 North Broadway in tax-free Salem, New Hampshire. Bead Gallery offers more than 300 classes and all the beading supplies you need to make beautiful jewelry. Artisan's Accomplice is proud to sponsor Jewelry Junkie. Artisan's Accomplice is a complete website system designed for jewelers and crafters. Create your own website with all the features you need to display and sell your products online. Try it out at artisansaccomplice.com. But Santa, I have been good. Honestly, I have been, I have been good. What are you talking about? Look, old man, you pro Hello? Hello? Hey, Pam. Oh, What's hey. going on? Oh, nothing. Are you arguing with Santa again? Well, look at that old man promised me. No. He said he couldn't afford to give us any elves this year, so <laughs> I'm really upset. Well, you know, don't be too upset. We can make our own gifts here oh. on Jewelry Junkie. Oh. <laughs> everyone and welcome to Jewelry Junkie TV. I'm your host Pam Healy and to my left is Genevieve Martineau, our B consultant. Hi everybody. Hi. Now uh, first thing I think that I have to remind you that we are on we have a website I should say we're on on the online as my husband would say. Really on the internet? On the internet. No yes. on the online. Okay. <laughs> At www jewelryjunkietv.com and there you will get information on the different episodes and the jewelry that we've made and uh, you can also get a newsletter so uh, just make sure you go and, and sign yeah, up yep. absolutely a lot of information and send us emails here. you know let us know what you think and uh, what kind of episodes you'd like to see yeah we're always interested in getting information from yes. people and if you have any questions we'll be more than happy to answer them on our next show so um, give us give us a little a little feedback feedback or a little ringy dingy as we used to say in the olden days <laughs> <laughs> um, today we're going to be focusing on a new stitch called netting and it's a very versatile stitch. I uh, found that, uh, I was surprised. I, I was looking over uh, in my books. I have a couple of books on netting. And, yeah. uh, well, let's, let's show people a little bit about what we brought yes, with some of the why netting. Don't you, why don't you do that? I'll get out of your way mm -hmm. and you can demonstrate. Oh, well, you can look too. Uh, but, sure. So basically, if okay. you look on the table here, we brought different examples of netting. And netting is a really great basic stitch. Uh, basically, the principle behind it is that you pick up a bead, and then you'll pick up a bunch of beads, Yikes. skip over some beads, and go through another bead. Right. Okay? Yeah. So, basically, um, if on these first examples, they're very uniform. Right. Um, so, basically, the bead size is very uniform, and the number of beads picked up and skipped over is very uniform. So, that's why these ones, you know, look the way that they do. And just by using different colors, you can create different patterns in the stitch. But it's all basically the same stitch using different size seed beads? Yes, and these ones are very uniform. However, once uniform. you start changing mm -hmm. the beads you use and the sizes of the beads, you can um, create different looks. For example, this bead has some crystals in there, and because of the different size crystals, you can encase a larger cabochon or crystal. Okay. You can also um, go in a circular pattern to make different shapes like that, or you can go in a tube pattern. Right. Um, then this stitch is called the Ogallala butterfly stitch. Oh yes. Which is a version of netting um, created by the American Indians, and hmm. uh, but basically the principle behind it is that you're putting a lot more beads every time you pick up. You pick up more beads with every pass that you do. Okay. So it creates these pretty ruffles. Yes. Um, this is a Russian spiral, which is another tubular netted stitch. There's another oh. example of it. That's yep, you're I wearing know. one today. Right. 
Um, we have beaded beads that are created with a netting stitch. And then um, over here, I created this collar oh, that is pretty. based on um, some, like a Hungarian Russian stitch, a uh, Hungarian netting stitch. Mm. And so basically, um, there's just uh, increases and decreases in my rows mm -hmm. to create these little patterns. Yeah. And then here is an example of an ornament, and here's another ornament, um, where just by increasing the number of beads with every row, it creates this net that can fit right over a Christmas ball. Right. So. Right. Um, and once, they, once you learn netting, which is an extremely easy stitch, the versatility, I mean, it's endless. Yep. And doing that, um, over the um, for Christmas um, Christmas holiday bulbs, I mean it's it's yeah. a great gift. A yes, and it looks gift, beautiful. Now, what would Let's you like? show some of the books that you brought. Yes. So okay. these are examples of some um, books that Pam has in her personal collection. Right. This um, is showing Pam. how to do netting, and this Diane. one is Diane Fitzgerald. Mm. Um, tell us why do you like that book? The woman's a genius. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I. Uh, she's written many, many books. Yep. And um, very, very, very detailed and very easy to understand. And she gives a background on the stitches, where they're from, and different types. Uh, she's just phenomenal. I mean, the the amount of information you can get. I, yep. I'm always fascinated by... It's a great book. It is a great book. I'm always fascinated by where... Uh, these stitches origin originally came from and um, yep it, so that's a good one for it's a resource. An excellent one. Yep. And then my other book is um, of course Carol Cipher's book which is called Mastering Beadwork and this book is is a fantastic book for anyone who's starting out uh, uh, bead weaving. Yep, and she, has, and she covers all different kinds of stitches in that one. She covers everything, and she's she's very very good. Um, this is to give you an example yeah. of how um, the illustrations the are. illustrations are. I mean, it's they're very well done, so you can understand what she is talking about. She describes everything. Carol's just wonderful. Yep, awesome. And uh, I brought a book as well today. Oops, sorry. This one is called um, Easy Bead Stitching, and this is a Kalmbach publication. Oh, yes. Um, and this is all about netting, and so I thought that we could give this one away oh, yeah. um, in our raffle. So when you sign up online um, for the month of December, this is the book that's going to be raffled off, and it shows different... Um, netting stitches. Yes. So different projects. And there's the Agolada oh. butterfly that we talked about. Just a little pretty one with some crystals in it. That looks like this one. And then uh, we have some flowers, mm -hmm. kind of like the little earrings. Yep. Yep. And that look like the snowflake. And tubular netting, kind tubular of like the netting. Russian spiral. Right, which is my favorite stitch. And so, and then this, which um, looks it? a little bit like the uh, Mexican or Ecuadorian like stitching. So. Yeah. Lots of really great ones. I actually have a necklace like this that I forgot to bring in today. Of course you did. Yes, of course. Yes. But, um, but there's a di here we have a picture of it. <laughs> so, that's okay. That's anyway, fine. so that's going to be raffled off. That's going to be our raffle for this month. Yep. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so um, the necessary tools that you need, you need plenty of needles. I find that... Mm -hmm. um, when I use needles, I, I have a tendency, I should have brought them in, I have a tendency to bend them a little bit, like in half. Yep. And they're very, very flexible, but if you are very tense when you're stitching. You can snap them right in half. Yeah. See, That's this right. is this is one of mine, <laughs> although it's not too bad. It's not too, too bad. Um, you need, basically all you need is the um, some thread. thread. And some seed beads. And needles and seed beads. And, and you're on your way. Right. So, yeah, right. well, today I'm going to demo um, a little star. So, um, this is what the star looks like. And what's um, great about it is you can turn it into a pair of earrings. Um, so, it's really quick and easy. I'm going to show you guys how we do that. And uh, you could also connect a whole bunch of these stars together to make a necklace or a piece of jewelry. You could also uh, vary it in size. For example, once you get the idea of what we're doing today, 
you could make something more along the lines of this ornament. Right. So just depending on the, the, the number of beads you use in between the stitches will vary it. Um, and then <clears throat> besides that, you can make this as little ornaments for a tree or little, um, you can use it for tags on packages oh, to yeah. decorate your packages. I didn't think of that. So um, you can also change it. So if you wanted to have a six pointed star instead of a right. five pointed star, you just add a few more beads. So we're going to show how to do that today. Okay. Okay. Yes, that's wonderful. All right. So for this, um, it's a pretty quick little thing to make. You're just going to use some beading thread. Um, you can use the beading thread of your choice. There's, um, um, we, um, there's gray or white and depending on the color of your seed beads depends on which color you're going to use. Yes. Uh, when you're using light colors like this, we like to use the white thread because um, then it doesn't show as much. And today I'm actually using the white because I, I do want to be able to see the thread on the yeah. on the television show. So yes. um, that's it's not how a I'm shiny, doing it. It's not a shiny seed bead so we can see it. Yes, so. That's just the demonstration. All right, so. For demonstration purposes, I should say. <laughs> All right, so the way we do this is basically I have my size 12 needle mm -hmm. and my beading thread and it's just threaded at one end. And I usually don't like to fold over the thread too far on my needle because mm -hmm. I wherever you have that thread going through the needle creates a little bit of wear on the thread. Yes. And so when there's wear, um, then that piece of thread is, is no longer usable. Well then so you I would have cut that to be very huge. cautious when you're you know, stitching next to someone else. Yes. I've done that a few times. Yes, I heard about that. <laughs> yes. Okay, so basically the first thing we're going to do for the first row is Not we're going to pick up 10 seed beads. So I'm just using my needle to scoop up 10 seed beads. Four. Ten. And so I have 10 seed beads on my needle. And the reason I start with 10 mm -hmm. is because for the star, it's going to have five points. So 10 is two, 2 times 5. So if you were going to make this um, as a 6-pointed star, you would 12. do 12. Exactly. So depending on how many points um, for this recipe, you would pick up twice the number that you want for points on the star. And so basically what I'm going to do is bring my beads down a few inches from the end of the thread here. It's about 6 inches. And if I pass back through all the beads. Mm, that's how I do it. I pass back through all the beads with my needle very carefully. Mm -hmm. If I do that, then in order to tie a knot with my thread, mm -hmm. it's much easier. So basically what I want to do is try and form a circle with these beads. So you can see that it's now a circle. Right. And so if I tie a knot here, and that's just left over right, right over left, right. like you would any knot, mm -hmm. that will make a nice looking knot. I like. I like going through the beads like that too because it, it seems to be um, not, it's not flexible, you know, it, it's not flimsy. It's it nice. stiffens it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it really does. All right, so the first thing I like to do is go through one bead just to sew away from the knot. It also sets the direction which I'm sewing. Right, and you can sew either direction. It doesn't matter if if you go clockwise or counterclockwise. No, it's as whatever you're comfortable you, with. Right, but as long as you stay in that same pattern, uh, sometimes I have a tendency not to. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be going one way, then all of a sudden I'll be going another way, and Jen will say, "Oh, Pam, you, you, you invented a new stitch. How nice!" <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, for this stitch now, the next step is the next row, and we're going to pick up three seed beads, and I'm going to skip over the next bead. So if my thread is coming out of one bead, I'm going right. to skip that bead and go through the next. Right. And so I'm going to pick up three, skip one, go through one. Right. So I'm going to do that all the way around, so it's going to create five little points. And there's always a pattern to follow, isn't there, if you're doing something specific? Yes so that you don't have to um, you don't have to think how am I going to do this don't yeah have to panic especially if you're, you're new at it uh, it's always nice to be able to follow a pattern and understand the stitch and the more you do it the more understanding 
you have of the stitch. Yes, it gets easier with it time. It gets very easy. Just like anything, practice makes right. perfect. It's true. All right, so I've picked up all of that and I've gone through all the way around. Awesome. So I'll just show people what that looks like. So now I have five little points. It already looks like a little star. It does. You could actually stop right there if you wanted. Yep. Um, now my thread is coming out in the valley between the two petals. Right. So I need to step up and in order to do that you're basically going to go through two more beads so you come out the tip. Right. The point. Yeah. You want to come out at the Exactly. Point. The point of that petal right. or that star. The tip of point. The top of the mountain. Right. Okay? Yeah. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up five beads. <clears throat> You're going to pick up five. One, two, three, four, five. Five beads. And you're going to go from tip to tip and do that all the way around. So picking up five. It's wonderful. And that's going to change the shape. And having the beads in front of you always helps. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to having them on the side like I've had. I've done that. All right. So we're just going around. But we won't go into that. <laughs> Five. One more. You just have to make sure you remember where the beginning is. Sometimes people, you know, they don't realize where the beginning is. And I like to, after I've um, put the beads in, the seed beads in, I like holding it down. So it makes it, I, I think it makes it a little bit tighter because you don't want it to be flimsy. You don't want it to be too, um, what's the word, aside from flimsy. Um, if it's, if you don't have the right tension, it doesn't yeah. come out right. Yeah, you want to make sure that you don't see any thread. Right. So you pull it just tight enough that there's no thread showing. All right, so the next step is, the, is a little bit different and it's a little, um, trickier to see, so I just want everybody to pay attention. So basically, I'm again in the valley between the two points, and rather than stepping up all the way to the tip of mm -hmm. that point or the middle bead, I'm actually only going to go through two beads. So I want to go uh, up to the bead right before the tip. Okay. So that's a little bit different. That's I'm changing the stitch a little bit. Right. And so now I'm going to still pick up five beads. Two, three, four, five. Right. But this time I'm going to skip one and go through the two on the other side mm -hmm. and the little valley bead. Right. So what happens when I do that, if I just shape these beads a little bit with my fingers, it's creating a little extension and that's making a taller, a taller point. So then again, I'm going to go through two right. and I'm going to pick up five. Right. And you're basically just adding on that tip. Yes. You just... Um and then I'm going to go skip over one, right. go through two and the valley bead. And there we go. And reshape it with my fingers. Just about the tip. And then come up two again. And I'm basically making sure I don't skip any beads so there's no thread that shows. Yeah. You're just building up on, um, on the, on the um, item, on the thing you're working on, I should say. Yep, I'm building up on each petal. All right. And so basically I'm going to go through three beads, so down three, up two. And see, it goes pretty quickly. I've already created the mm -hmm. whole star practically. And, and you have a good hold on, on the piece, which is always good. You know, that way you don't, um, you don't drop it like I do. I just try to, to only, Move what I need to move. Right. I know. Your dexterity is a heck of a lot better than mine. But then again, too, you are younger, as you remind me so often. <laughs> All yeah, right. Yeah. Laugh. Laugh now. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And there we go. So now I've created all the tips to my star. That's beautiful. And so now you can see I have two matching stars and those would make 
great earrings. All you would need to do to turn that into a pair of earrings would be to climb up to the tip of one of these one of these points. Right. So I'll just go up to the tip of one and show people. Okay, I'm up to the tip. And then if you just make a little bit of a loop, so let's say I pick up, I don't know, six beads. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have them even. And then just go back through that same tip bead. Right. And you can see I have a little loop. And then I could just reinforce that a couple times. Put that on an ear wire. Right. And it makes Oh, do I have an ear wire? <laughs> no, I was just holding it up like a pair of earrings. Oh, okay. Makes a good pair of earrings. Here we See? go. And that would look lovely. Yes. So there you go. That's how you do that. Now, when I was reading about the net netting stitch, it said uh, there are two ways. It's horizontal or vertical. Yes, to do your netting. Mm -hmm. um, that's true if you're going, depending on what you're making. So... Um, that's what I, I, I kind of like... What did, what did she mean by that? That was Carol that, that said that. It's a vertical well, basically, and you could work horizontal by going the length of the bracelet, or you could oh, work so you way. would grow it long way, back and forth, back and okay. forth, back and forth. Right. Or you could grow it the short way and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So depending on how you, how you want, the look. want the look or oh, how okay. you're stitching it will de depend on whether oh. it's horizontal or vertical. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, that's right too. So this pattern yes. is the basic idea behind these yeah. stitches. And this is a, this is an ornament that Pam is working on. Right. I ran out of seed beads. <laughs> she I ran, ran out, out of, of I ran out of the bronze seed beads, so right. I have to um, But this is a little pattern that, that we created and we made these for we made these for our uh, tree that we gave to the Festival of Trees. We donated Yep, and, so um, if you have a chance to go to the Festival of Trees right. um, this year or any year. Um, they're wonderful. Yes, they're beautiful and you can go and uh, Bee Gallery has a tree with a lot of beaded objects on it and beaded jewelry, but there are hundreds of trees that have been donated by hundreds of people, different people and yeah. businesses uh, in the area. So absolutely. it's definitely a worthwhile, yeah. wonderful. worthwhile wonderful. outing. Um, yeah, absolutely. A lot of... Um, a lot of hard work goes into that every year. Yeah. Uh, but you can tell it's worth it. Everyone loves it. And um, also, what was I going to say? I can't remember. I miss my mind totally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that's right. I uh, wanted to do a, a recap of what we went over. Okay. The raffle. Yep. This is our raffle piece. Check. I'm checking my list, my I Christmas know. list. Um, we should also mention that we're on Facebook. Oh, yes. I, I keep forgetting to say that. <laughs> and um, also our website, jewelryjunkietv.com. We have uh, a lot of information for you. Yep. It's gonna, it, we have pieces uh, from past episodes that you can look at. Yep. And you can. And that's where you'll find a, a link to our Facebook. That's so right. So if you do want to friend us on Facebook or be a fan of our bead gallery, yes. I mean, our. Jewelry Junkie page. B BFF. Yeah, be my BFF. Um, or my that. JJF, J -J Jewelry Junkie friend. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Okay, <laughs> moving right All right, along. moving right along. <laughs> we have a newsletter, we have yep. demos. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, so anyway, um, these work up real, real quickly, and it doesn't really require a lot of effort. Believe me, because I've done them, and um, and they're nice gifts. So, and these are also very lovely gifts too. And people look at them, and they think, "Oh, look at all the hard work you went through." And you're thinking, "Ha ha! No, I didn't." <laughs> well, a little bit of time. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit. But I made like around six of them last year, and. When I forgot someone, I went, oh, I have a gift for you. Here you go. Thank God I made six of them because I gave them all away. So anyway, uh, until next time, hope you have a wonderful holiday, and we hope to see you again. In the new year. In the new year. Jewelry Junkie TV. Happy beating.
Bead Gallery loves a jewelry junkie. Bead Gallery is located at 100 North Broadway in tax-free Salem, New Hampshire. Bead Gallery offers more than 300 classes and all the beading supplies you need to make beautiful jewelry. Artisan's Accomplice is proud to sponsor Jewelry Junkie. Artisan's Accomplice is a complete website system designed for jewelers and crafters. Create your own website with all the features you need to display and sell your products online. Try it out at artisansaccomplice.com.